Hi there. Welcome back to Almost Machining. I'm Phil. I know it's been a while. It's been a very hot summer here in Phoenix. And um, I've done a lot of work here in the shop. I haven't really filmed a lot of it. But uh, this next section, I'd like to get uh, you to take a look and come along with me as we start putting my milling machine back together. What we've got here is the milling machine base for my, I, I, I guess, uh, just uh, import milling machine. I had a problem. I had scraped in this side, lightly scraped in the other side, put my sled on here, and I had, this side was eight thousandths lower. So I was gracious enough to have a friend with a milling machine that allowed me to take this machine to that mill. I set it up on the mill, I got it as close as I could possibly get it, and milled the, the decks with a, a dovetail cutter, and came in and got this to where it's pretty close. I had an issue where the tool started to rub on the side right here, and the, the end mill, I had to stop it, so it left a, a little circle right there. But what we're going to do is we're going to scrape this down, do a, do a light scrape. We'll also scrape the other side, and then we'll start aligning this machine with both of these two surfaces to where the column is going to be bolting to. Let's get the column in this a little bit better. And there's the column right there. We just got back from Barzi Industrial with Stan, where we did some work on his grinder. And that turned out really nice. And this one, it should be just as nice if um, if I do things right. I'd like to have this machine fairly accurate to do a lot of milling work on until I get a, a larger mill. As you can see, it's mostly been cleaned up. The column where the mill sat, it was out three or four thousandths. I can't tell really where it is right now. I don't have a smooth enough surface to really measure that. It's within three right now. Just like it was before, we'll get that taken care of as we scrape it in. We get the machine set up and we'll blew it up to just get a reference and start going from there. Okay, so it's blued up. Well, I use yellow, but still. We've got a little bit of yellow covering all the surfaces. I'll go and I'll make just a, a nice roughing pass with the, with the scraper. And then we'll stone it and start seeing where our position relatively is in relationship to the three surfaces that we're looking at right now. So it's been raining a little bit here, so I don't have a whole heck of a lot of light. This is after the first scrape. I haven't um, stoned this down yet. We just covered the whole surface with a nice crisscross. And that'll allow the, uh, the surface to be relatively smoother. I can get a little bit better light on that. Let's so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working this. I'll stone this, measure it, and then continue to scrape and bring you back when I've got a little bit closer. Or I might even go be able to take a good measurement and show that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to blow up my straight edge put the straight edge on here and then we'll blow up the other piece and slide it underneath the dovetail to get an idea of where the reading is currently. I've done uh, probably seven passes on this side, five on the other side. I wanted to focus on this side to see where I'm at between the two. In order to do that I have to get this relatively close. So let me get the square or the straight edge blued up and the other piece blued up and I'll show you what the markings look like. All right, here we go. Straight edge first. It's blued. One, two, three. Keep it nice. So from this, you can see I have contact here, missing some here, contact, and light contact there as well. And then to try to keep this in the middle, here's my prism to slide in. I'm trying to focus just in this one smaller area. And that pattern repeats and then 
it also goes down into into the edges let's take a closer look so here with this uh, slightly closer look we are getting roughly the same blue contact back up in the back there and that's what I'm after so across the the relative surface it's not I wouldn't call it scraped in you can still see the bare area there and then also back along the back edge which is easy to work in it's easier to work the front than it is to work underneath the dovetail so what I'll do now is I'll take the saddle and blew it up and put the saddle on and start scraping in for the for the saddle let's take a brief time out and talk about what I'm trying to get to I don't know the condition of these two parallels but hopefully for demonstration purposes this will work out so there's a almost like an I-beam type structure on this one and if this one was to be the the milling machine base I've, I still have some blue ink left so let's Let's put this across the blue real quick and see if we pick up any blue on this whatsoever. Yeah, a little bit. Not much. So there's a little bit of light blowing on it. And if this was a saddle, in a perfect world, these two pieces would fit together and these two surfaces would be the mating surface that the saddle would ride on back and forth on the milling machine. Now, because the machine's initial condition was so far out, with one being lower than the other one, it's possible that they had originally scraped the machine to where it, it, it compensated for that. What I have to do now is I have to make sure that the left surface and the right surface are both coplanar, that they are parallel and their planes are the same. That the plane created on this side and the plane created on this side going out in all directions they match so what um, what I could have is a condition where it's tilted to this extreme or it's tilted to this extreme or in another case I could have it where the left side is actually lower and it's only technically suspended and correct on the on the right side or where the left is and then also tilted to that extreme or the other so if this was the if this was the saddle which is behind in the background here one could be up and the other could be in the complete opposite direction and it still be able to move and and hardly notice because I'm I'm trying to get this down as close as I can get it so I do know that compared to the surface plate, the existing saddle in its condition right now, that these are coplanar by the, by the way that I've got the, the pattern on them, that I can put this back on the machine. And if I see that it's contacting on the inside on this piece, and then on the outside on that, then I know that I am tilted in one direction. In, th in that case, it would be tilted this way, or the opposite with how the blue shows back up, back on the milling machine base, and start to scrape that in to where the milling machine base then matches the saddle. At that point, the top of the saddle is also parallel with the bottom. I, I think it was two or three tenths total, but that's gonna help control how well I'm able to keep the machine trammed into itself that as the table travels across it's not the, the whole table as it's traveling across isn't rising up on one end or rising up on the other end or doing a complete uh, convex or, or concave type operation. I realize that the tool is what's stationary much like on a grinding machine but you want to limit how much of that change you have when you're putting the machine back together if you can do it. Let's try, to, let's try to straighten it out so that it is uh, that both planes are the same plane on the, build, on the base.